Welcome to the Daily Update. Well, I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, March 21st, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, March 22nd. Saw another update. You could say this was more of the in continued reaction to what happened in Wednesday's session with the Fed turning more dovish and saying that they may stop with quantitative tapering, which means instead of letting bonds fall off as they mature, they may come in and start to actually buy bonds. That was a huge support for the market after the whole COVID plunge when the Fed just came in and started buying trillions of dollars worth of bonds to send liquidity into the market. And that's really what helped stocks go back up because when money goes into bonds, they buy, that pushes interest rates down. Some of that money also found its way over into the stock market, also produced a lot of buying. And there's some hope that maybe not on that scale, but something like that is going to resume again and give a lot of support to the market. Now, we'll have to watch in the weekly videos to see what does the Fed balance sheet look like? How are things changing? What are some other things going on? But for right now, that's kind of the new scenario that the market has achieved or at least thinks that it's achieving. If you didn't see the open in Thursday's session, you kind of missed everything. We gapped higher and then spent the rest of the day drifting lower. So the intraday action was not all that positive, but the close from Wednesday to Thursday saw another gain. Please note that I do have a program posted on the YouTube and Rumble channel that talks about the program that I'm hoping to launch in June. Feel free to check that out. I will be posting additional videos that kind of go into more depth about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, and so forth. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a gap higher open above R1 at 52.43. We still kept going up, but we didn't quite get to R2 at 52.62. As the day went on, we just drifted lower, and we closed a little bit below R1. We were up 0.32%. The moves that we're seeing are not big as far as a percentage basis. We're not up over 1% and so forth. We're And so this is a little bit more contained right now. We were still below average with volume. And our technicals are positive. We are looking overextended. Again, there are two ways to look at that. You can see it as, okay, the market's becoming overbought and due for a pullback. It's been due for a pullback for a long time now. But other than maybe one down day here or there, we're just not getting any kind of a sustained pullback. The other hand, you can say, all right, this is just showing good momentum. It's like, you know, pushing your foot all the way to the floor and the car keeps going high, you know, faster and faster and faster, even though you've maxed out what the pedal can do, the car keeps speeding up. Well, at some point, the car is going to go as fast as it can go and eventually maybe run out of gas and need to slow down or actually stop. But we're not seeing that yet. Now, in Friday's session, we don't have any economic reports. It's ahead of the weekend. There have been some pretty good gains that we've seen. So we still want to keep in mind that we're coming in, we've been in a period of potentially weak seasonality. We want to respect that. If we do start to pull back, we'll be evaluating things to see what support levels hold, which ones don't hold. And then we'll just evaluate that as it unfolds to see, okay, is this turning into just a normal pullback or more of a decline? But we can only evaluate that on a day in and day out basis. And it's still about inflation and interest rates, a more friendly environment now where it appears inflation is still kind of a concern. And so we'll have to keep up with the economic reports going forward. But interest rates seem to be more market friendly right now. And the, the Fed has shifted over to more of a dovish stance. But we want to be aware of all the other things going on in the world. Some comments, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow all closed at all-time highs. Small caps did have a good day but close near their intraday lows. And we, we saw that too for the S&P, and I'll show you that when we go through the intraday chart. It would be nice if the small caps could really kick into gear, and some days they show some promise, but we're just not seeing an awful lot of follow-through. Now, if we 
get into a better economic condition as far as the stock market is concerned. It may be totally disconnected from real life, but at some point, small caps tend to do better when folks are already in their established investments. And now they're like, okay, let's try something a little more adventurous. And that's sometimes when they drift into the small caps, but we're not really seeing any sustained movement like that right now. Semiconductors were strong. The tech sector got hit a little bit, but this part, uh, this industry group or the sector that we call it, ended up being strong with the semiconductors. And then Reddit had its initial public offering. Don't hear a lot about those these days. I remember back in the dot-com boom, you were getting new IPOs all the time. You would have these stocks that would open up at two, $300 a share, stocks that within a year didn't even exist anymore. But that's usually a positive thing when a company is bringing themselves to the market. On a short-term basis, we still have our 20-period exponential moving average. The Stoke RSI is now on the list. The Williams Percent R, CCI 14 and 20, they've been on the list. The Stochastics has been on the list. And we're getting just a little extreme with our RSI based on nine periods. That's a new addition. Intermediate term, still kind of a long list here with the 50-period exponential moving average. We're still up into that plus three channel with the standard deviations chart. The rate of change 50, that's back on the list now, but not necessarily really extreme. It's just getting into that area where we want to take notice. The oscillators are showing some improvement. They're trying to turn up. Some are starting to come above their moving averages, but still others have yet to actually cross over positive. We have the CMB composite. That's a new addition. And the Sean trend meter is looking a little more extreme. The percent B, this is two days now that we've had this close above the upper Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Bands haven't adjusted yet. So we're still getting an extreme reading there. And then our 10 period new high, new low study, that's a little bit longer in the intermediate term. And that's still pegged at the top showing good momentum. And if you hear a cat in the background, he's just saying hello to everybody. In the long term, we still have our 150 simple moving average and then the 200 moving averages that are simple and exponential, they're still looking extreme. Again, we just wanna know about this right now because this sometimes this means that we're getting a little bit exhausted, but this can also suggest good momentum. And these have been on the list now for a while. We're still working with that scenario. The Fed has almost come out and said, okay, we're done raising rates. Now the big question is going to be when or if we're going to cut interest rates. May doesn't seem as likely now, so they're looking at possibly June. And they also came out with their SEP, septic tank, yeah, that report that they come out with suggesting that there could be three cuts in 2024. The dollar was up and interest rates were unchanged. We still closed at 4.27% with the 10-year yield. The dollar going up could have put some pressure on stocks. And if the dollar really keeps going up, that could add some more sustained pressure. We're still inverted with our yield curves. We're getting up to that extreme reading now with sentiment. We're at 75. When we're at 75 or above, I didn't change it, but it should be extreme positive now where we had been at 73. We're looking a little more trendy now. The ADX is trying to cross above the moving average. So if we see more upward move, that could develop into more of a stronger uptrend. But if we see a down day, it's likely that the ADX may drop back down below its moving average. We're still above 20, so we are in a trending environment. Our bias is positive with another update and our momentum continues to be positive. We did get a whole list of economic reports. I only have a few charts to show you of these reports. Weekly jobless claims came in at 210,000. That's less than the 216,000 they thought were gonna come out. And it was a little bit down from last week's 212,000. The continuing claims are at 1.807 million. Last week, it was at 1.803 million. And then the current account balance came in negative, a little bit less than what the market was expecting. I don't have a chart for that. The global manufacturing, the preliminary reading is above 50. That's the takeaway from this. 
it came in at 52 and a half. Last time it was at 52.2. And the services came in also above 50, showing some expansion. It came in at 51.7 and down from the 52.3 we saw last time. Existing home sales were greater than expected at 4.38 million. They expected 3.92 million. Last time it came in at a flat 4 million. This is another one that I have some, I do have charts to show you this. The leading economic index or indicator, it was up 0.1%. They expected it to be down 0.2%. Last time it was down 0.4%. The Philadelphia Fed index, don't have a chart of that. It was at 3.2. Last time it was at 5.2. Here are the weekly jobless claims where we're starting to see a decrease here with the black line. That's the raw figure that we get. But the moving average is still continuing to go up. But when, if this continues to go down, that shows that there's strength in the job market right now. And we are continuing to decline with the moving average with the continuing claims where we're flattening out after coming back up with the continuing claims here. Here's everything plotted on one chart, kind of in a big picture, showing how, how we stand with each other. Here's a blow up of that same chart showing the continuing claims in blue. We get the unemployment rate once a month. That's why it's lagging behind here. And a little bit of a decrease when we look at the red line for the jobless claims. These don't have the moving averages on them. That would create too much of a mess on this chart. I just wanted to show the raw numbers closer to each other to get a different perspective. Here's LEI. This is year over year. It remains negative that way, but we are seeing some improvement. This is the blue line. And it was getting quite negative and it's starting to come up. It's still negative when you take it all together, but it is showing some improvement. They also plot GDP here, which continues to be positive. And that would be nice if the LEI would continue to go up and possibly really help out GDP to show, show a bit more growth with the whole economy. Here's another one looking at the negative six month growth rate. Growth rate still signals headwinds. We're coming right back up to this red line. When we drop down below this, that means there's a really high chance of going into a recession. So far, that hasn't happened. It could still happen. There's evidence to say, yes, we will. There's other evidence to say, no, we won't. If this can get back above this red line, that would help curtail some of the fears out there that we will go into a recession. But this could always turn and go back down as well. Some blog charts. This is put up by Real Investment Advice. I go through sentiment and the VIX and all that, but th they put it all together on this chart, just showing the black line. That's the S&P 500 just skyrocketing up here. And then a look at sentiment way over here on the right side in red, showing that we're, we're getting pretty high. We're getting near that extreme optimism reading. Now, we could still go higher than where we're at right now. But folks are starting to get a little too giddy here. And at some point that may switch into a contrarian indicator. While it's moving in one direction or the other, we go with that, whether we're going up or down as far as sentiment is concerned. When we get to an extreme reading, that's where we look at, okay, now we need to use this in the opposite direction, or at least consider that. And this is an update of the chart that I showed in yesterday's video. This is the presidential cycle and the S&P returns. The, the yellow line, that's the all the cycles together. And we tend to be positive during presidential election years. And the dark blue line is when the president's in his first term. The light blue line is the second term. And then the green line, this is an update of what the S&P has been doing. The chart that I showed you came out before the big Fed change and the big move up that we saw and this is just suggesting maybe we're getting a little out of hand here when it comes to what we've typically had happen on an average basis before then this is Nomura's policy rate forecast now that the fed has pretty much signaled that everybody's trying to figure out okay when are these things going to happen now they're looking at july as far as the rate cut and then another rate cut possibly in December. So they're really only seeing two in 2024. This is going to adjust. Everybody's going to speculate. You could come out with 10 different charts and get 10 different opinions as to what will happen here. And do you believe the risk of an equity market correction at some point over the next three to six months is high or low? This was after the big update on Wednesday, but before the update that we saw on Thursday, 
82% chance. Now, this could be used as a contrary indicator, too. If you have a lot of folks that are expecting, okay, the market's going to pull back and have some kind of a correction. Now, typically, a correction would be less than 10%. But when you have so many people thinking that, the market sometimes has a tendency to do the opposite. And then these are... Um, fund manager surveys, the next three charts are this. And this just says that the according to these fund managers, they're getting more and more on the side of saying that it's unlikely that we're going to have a recession in the next 12 months. Here, some fund manager surveys are asking the expectations for lower bond yields to fall below the, and I can't see that number, the one-year low. This is as bond yields could continue to come down. And then on the next one, this is where are they most overweight? We're seeing more money going back in to stocks or equities. And this is giving fuel to the fire, so to speak, as we're seeing more money going into stocks. Didn't really see anything on Twitter. Lots of stuff, lots of speculation. Some people are just convinced they're right. And if you disagree with them, which I don't, I just watch this going on. Then they just tell you how stupid you are. And I don't want to get into that kind of useless stuff there. But here's our intraday chart where all of the gain was seen right at the open. The futures were quite strong. We gapped higher above R1. We tried to claw our way up to R2, didn't quite get there, and then drifted lower and ended up closing back a little bit below R1. So when you take this bar by itself, which I'll show you later on the daily chart, it's not a real positive looking bar, but we've seen those before. Just something that we want to make notice of here. Intraday, we saw a lot of the strength in the initial overnight session. And then after Europe opened, a lot of strength there. Not an awful lot of strength in the cash market. And we're pretty much flat going into Friday's initial overnight session. And we are seeing an improvement here with growth and value together. But we're not really seeing growth doing all that well. It's actually lagging a little bit. Now, there are times... When growth can underperform and the market still goes up, we've seen that, and I'll show you that in the charts, it just tends to be more confident and more strong when we see growth outperforming value. Here's the intraday chart. We're still chopping around in this range. It did underperform. Even though they were both up, value did better than growth. End of day, growth was up, but value was up quite a bit more. But when we look at the mid caps, and this is where we're seeing some strength from right now, with the uh, mid cap growth, the value, it was up more. And with the small caps, it was also up more. So we ticked up just a little bit with our small cap growth to value ratio. We're still in this sideways trend after we had broken out of this. And we're seeing a little bit more of an improvement with the mid cap growth to value. It's actually coming back up above and matching the moving average here as we're setting new all time highs with the mid caps. And here's the S&P growth of value. It did turn up a little bit, but we're more or less range bound here. We still want to see this go up to give us a little bit more confidence. And discretionary to staples is showing some improvement, but not breaking out yet based on the ratio. Large cap growth set another new all-time high when we take it all by itself. Here's our trend. We're trying to come back above the moving average. Not quite there yet. It's still a little not really visibly obvious, but we are trying to turn back up. We do see the green line on top, but it's now going back above 40. That's when we want to take notice of this. When any one of these lines, whether it's the green line, red line, or the black ADX, when they get above 40, that means we're going a little too far too fast. Now we could stay that way for a while and it could continue to go even higher, but we just want to notice that. In the short term, we are looking a little more pronounced by trying to come back above the moving average. The green line is also above 40. We continue to drop off with volume. Now, there's some people that say, oh, volume doesn't count. It's all about intensity and, and how ferocious are people coming in and buying. I still think volume is important because if price is the head, volume is the neck. And the neck determines which way the head points. And this can also help you measure velocity of a particular move. Looking at sentiment, this has not been updated, but we're still getting a really high reading above four with the investor's intelligence recent survey. 
We are dropping now with the VIX. <clears throat> this is two days now where we've been below this upward sloping trend line. We're also dropping with the bar chart. And with the volatility of the VIX, we're also really dropping to a pretty low level, level now with the bar chart as well as the line chart. We have the skew index coming back into play now. This is what the market does when it's expecting some kind of a big move. We're not really sure if that's going to be another up move or a down move. But when we look at this, we're up into the red area again. Recent signals that we saw, one of these was before we saw a bit of a downward move. Another one was before we saw an upward move. So we really don't know what the market is expecting, but they're set up based on this indicator to think, okay, some kind of a big move could happen. The VIX is continuing to show that momentum is declining as the VIX overall has been going lower as stocks have been going up. The equity put call ratio did pull back. It really spiked up over the last two trading sessions. And then in Thursday's session, we saw some of that hedging come off. And I made a mistake in yesterday's video. The put call ratio. So puts come first. When folks are hedging their positions, they use puts to do that. I said they use calls. And I just got that backwards. But we did decline a little bit here on the daily chart, but we're still going up with the five period. That Those two solid up days is causing our moving average to continue to show movement going, <clears throat> movement going up. The risk volatility premium, I, that's how I'm used to saying it. it should be volatility risk premium, is continuing to drop below this band, showing that there's just not a lot of risk premium right now. And we had the latest reading from the American Association of Individual Investors. They're actually dropping off a little bit. They're getting more into this neutral area. We've seen the last two readings actually coming down. Looking at our advanced decline line, looking solid here internally with the S&P itself. We're breaking out based on price and volume. We're also looking really good with new highs. We just set a new high, new high right here as we're breaking out and setting new highs with the s p we're pegged at the top with the five period we're going back up with the 10 period we're still looking good here with the advanced decline ratio we're just under this line where we could start to see an extreme positive reading the blue line is short term that's a 19 day exponential moving average the red line is a 39 period exponential moving average and that moves a little slower Accumulation distribution. This is a little bit of a concern. We gapped higher and then spent the rest of the day drifting. We saw the accumulation di distribution actually go down, but we're still above the moving average. We're also not seeing an awful lot of strength in the chicken money flow. It's still positive, but it's drifting lower as the market has been going up. And this is another smart money indicator. The chicken oscillator is turning down, but is still above zero. And we're looking pretty good when we compare price and volume. This is the cumulative based on price for the S&P. We're breaking out to new highs. We're starting to break out now based on volume. So that's looking pretty healthy there. The NYSE cumulative advanced decline line is showing an improvement, but not breaking out to new highs. We're looking a lot better when we just look at, at one measure of the NYSE advanced decline line. This other NYSE advanced decline line is also breaking out above previous highs that were set back in 2021. So the broad market is showing a lot of improvement as well. When we look just at common stock, we're basing, breaking out based on price. We're also breaking out based on volume, but we haven't exceeded the high set back in 2021. So when we look at our advanced decline line studies, things are showing a lot of an improvement, a lot of improvement here. NYC common stock, the S&P, the mid caps, and even the small caps. The mid caps are looking stronger. They're breaking out above high set in December where we haven't matched that level yet with the small caps. Here's our daily chart. <clears throat> We're still above this pivot point and you can see there's a gap right here. Do you think the market's gonna try to fill that gap either in Friday session or at some point? Sometimes the market likes to try to fill a gap. From one when it's but there are some gaps that have been around for 80 90 years that have never been filled we are getting extreme positive with the stoke rsi but that can stay that way for a while we're coming down a little bit but still extreme with the williams percent r the cci 14 is giving us quite a high reading and the cci 20 is also looking extreme positive we're still extreme with the boom indicator we're getting kind of far away from the 20 and 50 period moving averages. We're still showing good momentum 
and not too far away from the 200 period moving average. We want to keep an eye on the 20 period moving average in case we see some kind of weakness here. We were wondering if this is going to provide support. And you can see kind of the scariness of this bar. We just kind of drifted off into outer space here and then closed at the low for the session. So it's a little bit concerning when we see this kind of a bar. Is it going to lead to a decline? We don't know that yet. We just want to see what we're seeing right now. We're still extreme with the 20, 50, and 200 period moving average studies. And, and these are just based on the S&P itself, the price of the index. We're still looking positive with the force index and we're above the midpoint. The midpoint's turning back up. We're coming down, but still extreme in the short term with the stochastics. We're getting extreme in the intermediate term. We remain extreme in the long term. And we're a little deeper into this plus three channel with our standard deviations chart. Intermediate term, we actually came down with a balance of power. It didn't like that gap up and then move lower. Somehow it picked that up and is actually showing a bit of a decline here. Is that an early warning sign? We're wondering. The CMB composite, it's coming right up to this black line. And again, I want to warn everybody, I put this black line on here. I take a long-term look at this chart and I say, okay, this looks like a pretty good spot. And so there's nothing magical about this. It's just when we get above this black line, that's when I make notice with this particular indicator. We're still positive with the go-no-go no go system with darker blue bars. We're also continuing to go up with the highest high value. The TTM squeeze, it is turning back more positive. We have been seeing a number of darker blue bars. Now it's turning back to a lighter blue, and that's more positive. The ease of movement actually declined a little bit, but we're still above zero. And we dropped down just a little bit with the Arun indicator after giving us an extreme positive reading. We're still above zero and advancing with the S&P McClellan oscillator. So now we're starting to turn back up based on price and volume. So this is looking more positive and more of a trend. We're also above zero and advancing with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So we're going back up based on price and volume. And the Swan and Trading oscillator is above zero based on price and volume and turning back more positive. And we're trying to turn up with the PMO, but we're still just, a, we're kind of right on top of the moving average now. But when we break it out based on price and volume, we are breaking out above the moving average. So it is turning more positive. We saw a bit of an improvement here with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are turning back up. We're flat, but still extreme positive with the PMOs that are above zero. And we're positive with the elders impulse system for the S&P. We're positive with the parabolic SAR. We're turning back up, but haven't quite crossed the moving average with the slope oscillator. We have crossed the moving average now with the MACD. So the momentum is switching back more positive. So all of our oscillators are showing some improvement, depending on which one you'd like to focus on. And everybody has their favorite ones. That's why I chart all of them here on this particular chart. And then I break them down into short, intermediate, and long term. We're still above all of our plotted moving averages. We did see a bit of a bounce up with the bullish percent index, which is more positive. We didn't see really any, any participation in Wednesday's move. We did see a bounce back up in Thursday's move, and that could be positive. If we're above 70 and going up, that is still positive. It's when we get above 70 and start to come down, that's when we get a little more concerned. We are going up and looking positive with the NYSE bullish percent index, and we're really seeing more of an improvement here with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. The money flow declined a little bit, but is still above 50. The ultimate oscillator declined and is also still above 50. We're turning back up at the vortex. We're still wondering about this negative divergence that we're seeing here. It may lead to nothing, especially if this green line can continue to show more follow through strength. We're not quite extreme with our RSI 14. We are getting extreme with the RSI 9. We're getting above this line here. But longer term, the takeaway is pretty much since the beginning of November, all of the RSI readings for both charts have been above 50. We've spent very little time below 50, and that's just showing positive momentum. We still continue to improve with the on-balance volume. We're starting to get a little bit extreme, but this is could be showing good momentum too with stocks inside the S&P that are above their 20 period moving averages, also showing some improvement with the 50 period moving average. And we're still looking 
again, extreme or showing good momentum with the 100 period moving average and also extreme or good momentum with the 200 period moving average study. We are turning back up with the Copic curve, but we haven't crossed the moving average yet. We're getting pretty extreme with the Sean trend meter. And it's kind of interesting. I heard Chris Shivako did a an interview and he he calls this the Sean day trend meter. I call it the Sean trend meter. I don't know if I'm saying this gentleman's name right or not. It's a book I read, my gosh, 25 years ago, um, where I read about these indicators. And then Sean or Sean Day, isn't that a singer, Sade? And um, he wrote about these indicators and then eventually was able to code them in a way to be used at stockcharts.com. I don't know why I said that. It's not really anything to do with anything. We're still looking extreme positive with the percent B indicator here. So that's two days we have seen this and we spend very little time outside of the Bollinger Band. So something might happen to cause price to go back down below this line. It could be a decline in price. It could be an expansion upward of the top Bollinger Band. The rate of change just barely coming above this 10 level. Sometimes this often marks an extreme positive reading. When we look at all the different trends, we are positive with the hike in ASHI, with the Keggy chart, the Renko chart, and the three line break. Everything is looking good on a trending basis. We did draw in a new X with the point and figure chart as we got up to the 5250 level, but we're still generating this long, tall up signal that came about on March 7th, meaning that we're really, really going up here. And that's causing the point and figure chart to kind of flash a warning sign. And then looking at our trend, we're still above this blue trend. We have not really been able to capture this red trend line here yet. And that just keeps going up and up and up. So if we have more follow through to the upside, we might have a shot at recapturing that. And we're wondering, okay, are we going to start a new 50-day cycle? Is it going to mean anything? We've been seeing a real solid up move. And right about now, March 21st, March 22nd or so, it looks like we are starting a new signal. And we finally got the day right on this one. We're still above this longer term pivot level. And the longer we stay above that, if we see some weakness, the more we may count this as possible support. We're still looking extreme with the 150 and 200 period moving average study. And we're positive across the board and across time frames with the Keller market model. And we saw a lot of blue or green here. We did see the industrial sector give a BPI cross below 80, but everything else ended up being positive here with the S&P setting a new all-time high. We're still looking good with the equal weight when we compare it to the S&P weighted index. Not much of a change here. Well, I guess we declined a little bit. The broad market tended to outperform the rest of the market. It was a little stronger. The Dow was able to clear this R1 pivot level, so we're breaking above resistance. We're positive with the diamonds when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. This is positive too. The NASDAQ was able to clear above and close above this R1 level, but we're closed right about on the level itself, maybe even a little bit below. The idea that we opened at the high and then spent the rest of the day coming down, that's a little bit of a concern for right now. Saw so kind of that same thing with the NASDAQ 100 higher open and then drifted lower as we went on just a little bit below this r1 pivot level but we're still positive with the elders impulse system for the qqqs we are showing some improvement here with nasdaq 100 momentum but we're still negative and we're further above the 20 period moving averages when looking at the 20 50 and 200 period moving averages here the small caps had an update, but still continue to pretty much be range bound. We've switched over to positive and remain positive with the Elder's Impulse system for the small caps. And we are showing some improvement here with the Russell 2000 small caps, but we, we're not really breaking out all that much right now. We're looking okay with the RSI above 50 and advancing. The longer term trend continues to be positive. We're turning back up, but we're still negative with momentum. The mid caps came right up to this R2 pivot level and we're not able to close above that. Now this looks a little better. See where the open is at the bottom and the close is near the top. So the mid caps ended up showing more strength. And we're positive with the elders impulse system when looking at the mid caps. 
Looking at Google, it was down three quarters of a percent, but it's still above the 50 and 200 day moving averages. And so it's showing some improvement. We're just wondering if it can hold on to some gains. There was some news about Apple getting sued for something. And so they could drop down over 4% and they continue to be in a downtrend. And this put some pressure on the mega caps. Tesla was down a little bit over a percent, was a percent and a half and continues to be in a downtrend. So this is pressuring the mega caps. NVIDIA was up again over a percent, but we're not really seeing much of a breakout here. We're still continuing to be in this range. The FANG index is also more range bound where it closed more near the low for the day. The financial sector just keeps shooting up here, up 0.82%. The dollar was up and we may see a golden cross. It hasn't quite happened yet. And then looking at the world index and th this, I have to do this chart in two phases and I didn't do the second phase of this update here. We mainly look at the bottom here, <clears throat> the relationship in the short term, US stocks are outperforming world stocks right now. And that's why we're seeing this decline, but longer term, the relationship is still pretty strong. Then looking at, Bonds, and we were pretty much unchanged with the 10-year yield. So we were also pretty much unchanged based on price. And then we're not seeing any real change in the growth to value ratios. The Qs are showing some improvement compared to the S&P, but still below a declining moving average. We're coming back up to the declining moving average with discretionary. We actually tick down a little bit when we look at large cap growth versus large cap value. So with the large caps, we're seeing some weakness. We saw a little bit of a bounce with the mid caps. We're seeing weakness with the small caps. We're still looking positive with our five-day moving average of the highs minus the lows across the broad market. We're still extreme positive and have pretty much been here, except for one little dip down. We've been up in this area for all of 2024 and even going back into 2023. So what's our outlook for Friday? I, I haven't changed this. We're positive. We're becoming more overbought. We're above that weekly chart overhead resistance, which at some point we might be able to call support. And then we are in a period of potentially weak seasonality that just doesn't want to develop, at least yet. We're not going to have any economic reports on Friday. And then we want to keep an eye on all the different geopolitical events. No economic reports here. We're done with this particular slide. I kept it here to make sure that I update it next time. Seasonally, though, we're looking more positive. Just when we go from 2002 up to 2022, with the Dow and the NASDAQ being positive, the S&P is neutral to positive. We are going to be finishing out options expiration week. Now, for this point, we're up on the week, where usually the week after expiration in March, we tend to be down. Don't know what that means, but we just always want to be aware of the market market moving in the opposite direction. We'll be on the 16th trading day of the month where we don't really see any definitive positive seasonality here. And then we're keeping an eye on this period from March into the early part of April where historically there has been some weakness. Also, we're seeing that historical weakness on this chart. Friday tends to be one of the more positive days of the week. Even though it's up 55.5% of the time, that means that there's a almost as big percent of the time that it's down. So we don't want to take this too much for granted. We're still in that window where Tom Bally's research suggests we could see some weakness. And then the warning signs, the equity put call ratio is still going up for right now. And that's negative. The copy curve is negative, but improving. And then with the negative divergences, we are seeing some improvements along the way here. Uh, but we're still wanting to respect those and keep an eye on those for right now. And then we're wondering about the weak seasonality that could come flying in at any time. The positive signs, we're still positive with the parabolic SAR. The vortex is still positive and possibly showing some improvement. The bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100 is back above 50 now. So that's even showing more improvement. Small and mid-cap growth are positive, but have been showing some weakness. But we're seeing a little bit more of a bounce out of the mid-caps right now. Large cap growth is holding up, but possibly showing weakness. We're, we're seeing more value going up right now. And the financial sector is positive. So our conclusion, haven't really changed anything here. We're positive. 
Yeah, we want to be aware that we're becoming extreme positive, or you could say even overbought. We're still above that overhead resistance, and we still are in a period of time that historically has showed weak seasonality. In the short term, we're still above that pivot point on the daily chart, and we're still above the longer term overhead resistance as well. Intermediate term, we're becoming more overbought as our list is getting a little longer. We're also positive with the long term, but we're still looking extreme with our 150 and 200 period moving averages. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a really good day and I will talk to you in the next video.